next stop, all the way from Dubai, we would like to introduce Nikita Sachdev, the CEO of Luna PR, to discuss how to scale a business in a bear market. Good afternoon, Toronto. Hi, how's everyone doing? So this is my second time in Toronto, and I have to say it's a beautiful city, and I'm totally loving it. It's a pleasure to be here. So today I want to talk about how to scale during a bear market. <clears throat> now, I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Nikita Sashlev. I am the CEO and founder of Luna PR. We are a PR and marketing agency focused on Web3 and disruptive tech. Uh, we're headquartered in Dubai. Uh, I'm from Texas, though. Uh, we're headquartered in Dubai. We have an office in Miami, uh, London, Singapore, and um, who knows, maybe Toronto next. So while I was brainstorming topics for today's discussion, I thought, um, you know, the no-brainer topic should be to tell you guys about my PR and marketing services and blow your minds and take your projects to the moon. However, when I was actually sitting down and thinking about this discussion, I thought, that's kind of boring. You know what's more interesting than telling you guys about my services? is telling you guys about my story. Because not to toot my own horn, but we do have quite an incredible story of resilience. We've really worked our butts off. And we've done this through th three bear markets. This is not our first rodeo. We scaled Luna PR from a company of five to a company of 100 employees. Um, we went from my living room and my mom's kitchen to having four offices in three continents. We've worked with over 600 clients since 2017. And I think we do have a couple of tricks up our sleeve on how to scale during this market. Of course, it wasn't easy. It was a lot of work. And it's not going to be easy ever. Anything that comes easy is just not worth it. So how did we do it? Before I talk about how we did it, the first lesson that I learned was bootstrapping, the value of bootstrapping. Now, Luna PR, my company, nothing to do with Luna Terra, is completely bootstrapped. I started this company on my own in my living room, as I mentioned, never took outside funding, and we scaled it to what I'd like to call a global powerhouse. So bootstrapping was important for a rainy day. So let's talk about the weather outside. So the block reported 10,000 employees got laid off in Web3 this year, let alone a quarter million in the tech industry, which is double from last year. Additionally, SushiSwap, OpenSea, Coinbase, Solana laid off a ton of employees, all very renowned names in this space. Luna Terra, FTX, huge powerhouses that collapsed and shook up the entire industry. Celsius, Voyager, 3AC, Bitcoin went down by 70%. Crypto market cap fell by 2 trill. Crypto users went down by 50%, and VC funding in Web3 down 76%. Ouch, ouch, ouch. I don't even need to tell you this. I'm sure you guys are all feeling my pain. It's been a really tough market. But what I want to tell you is the lesson that I learned from this, is that when everyone downsizes, you upgrade. Now, what I mean by upgrade is not hire more and expand your team. What I mean is you better your team. In the bear market, our revenues were down by 60%, which means that our clients went down by 60%, which also meant that I had more time to look into every single client and see what was required. When I went through every single client, I also went through the work that my team was reciprocating. And what I realized that not everybody was carrying the same weight. Not everybody was as passionate. Not everyone took failures and successes personally like I did. I cared so much about every single client, and I realized there were some employees that didn't. So yes, I did fire employees. 
but I rehired employees with more passion, the same passion that I had for the space. And I'll tell you, your team can literally make or break you. This was such a valuable lesson that I learned. And so that's one thing that I strongly recommend is looking into your team and making sure they're in it to win it with you. We eventually hired better employees. We hired employees not just from top 100 firms and with uh, master's degrees and qualifications, but as I mentioned, employees that shared the same passion as me. This eventually led to happier clients and stronger retention rates. The next lesson that I learned was changing the quality of my services as required. So better employees was great, but we also needed better services. So we realigned and we repositioned our services. What that meant was we had to start treating each business as it was our very own. We basically got married to our clients. And I keep telling this to clients, we have a booth out there, whoever comes to us. It's not, it's great. Like, if you wanna work with us, in any relationship, the feeling should be mutual. We need to think whether we want to work with you. Any partnership, anyone that you bring on board has to be mutual. It's a marriage. You're in it for better or for worse. So today, sometimes we, we nag at our clients if we need to, but it's because we share the same goals and we want the best for our clients. We wanna to succeed together. As I mentioned, we take your successes and failures personally. And whether you're a service provider or not, it should be like that with every single partnership that comes your way. So that wasn't really the job of a PR agency, but rather of a partner. And that's what differentiated us. The next thing that I learned was identifying the right Web3 projects. Now, this one's very important for those who have a company or a project or a startup out there. So when I mentioned that our relationships with our clients were like marriages, it was also reciprocal. We had to be a little bit picky. We're not just jumping in with anybody. We had a criteria. We had to make sure that if we're gonna work with you, we're working with someone that's set up for success. We want success. We want to show names on our portfolio that have won. So, the right Web3 projects have these five core values. And if you have a project, the, this should be your checklist. So, strong team profile, transparency, and presence in the public eye. Forget about anonymity these days. In some cases, it's okay, but it's important to show who the founders are, that your profile should be public. Otherwise, what are you hiding from? Tokenomics, structures, and funda with fundamentals. The key word here is fundamentals. Not every project can just have a token or an ICO. That's 2017, and those days are gone. Strong backers and strategic partners. Now, partners like the best VCs or governments or the right regulatory framework, all these things matter this, to this day and age. Realistic timelines to seize opportunities and your community is key and everybody relies on you for timelines. So have realistic timelines and stick to them. And existing ecosystem and revenue streams. Some of the best projects already have Web2 revenue streams and enter Web3. And this is what I've seen that the VCs want to invest in, Web2 projects that are successful and then enter Web3. And if you don't, it's fine. If you're a Web3 project, just make sure that there is a viable revenue stream in place. And this was our checklist. Only then we would do their PR and marketing. And if they didn't, ha if they, if they didn't have this, it was fine. We would help them achieve it. Last month, we introduced a client to the Ministry of AI in Dubai, and they got a golden visa. And that was a fantastic partnership and made for incredible press. And that's what a strategic advisor does. <laughs> so once you have that checklist, this is now where you get the ball rolling. 
you need momentum after this. And how do you get momentum? You get out news out there. It's just in your daily life. What you do on social media, you buy a car, you go on vacation, you keep the ball rolling, you keep action. So that's what you got to do with your company. You have to have some action. So our case study, this is what we did. So in the last one year in the bear market, we acquired the Cointelegraph Middle East franchise, which was a very bold move for us. But our name was everywhere, in the Middle East at least. We won over 10 awards. We fostered meaningful alliances and high-level partnerships with government bodies, such as, as I mentioned, Ministry of AI, Ras al Khaimah. Uh, we worked with the American Chamber of Commerce. We formed really strong partnerships to just help elevate us. We started Block Bites, a vlog that garners over 100K views. I just posted Toronto edition. And we continued to put out our achievements and successes constantly. We just have to get the momentum going. So, here are a couple of our exciting case studies. Now, these are not bull market case studies because we're not here to talk about bull market. Everyone will succeed in the bull market. This space is young enough for everyone to thrive. In the bear market, these were some of our successes. And let me tell you, the bear market wins meant more to us than the bull market wins. Then the bull market, we worked with Sandbox, we worked with Kadena, we rode that 800% wave and we were all chilling. In the bear market, we helped the largest game developer from South Korea enter the Middle East and get sovereign wealth funding. We hosted and produced a show on CNBC Arabia, which I hosted, hitting 50 million homes, airing three times a week in prime time, and we produced it. We featured CZ and three other massive crypto names on entrepreneur covers, and we grew several communities for our clients with over two million members collectively across various platforms. And those wins felt amazing. Those wins actually helped us to bigger and newer avenues. So there's no hack to growth, and there's no hack to achieving revenue, but I can just tell you that the traction makes a massive difference. So all of this, all of this commotion helped us with new avenues of revenue streams, and you don't need finances to do this. This was important to know. It took time, resources, and most importantly, creativity. We launched Block Bytes. Didn't cost us anything. It garners 100K views, as I mentioned. And we got loads of traction from clients that wanted to work with us after viewing our videos. We launched a newsletter that got 4,000 followers in the first week, 21K in the, in the first month. Also gave us loads of traction. And we stepped into hosting conferences, well, co-hosting, our next one is in Hong Kong, backed by the Hong Kong government, which we're very honored to be part of. So yeah, it opened up new doors for us, and that was all through creativity, not so much the finances. So this is us, we're Luna PR, a proud product of three bear markets, 100 employees, four offices, um, majority female team bootstrapped from my mom's kitchen. And it feels amazing to, to share my story with you guys here. I want to tell you a little bit more about our business. Luna Media Corp is our parent company. Luna PR, what I just told you about, our PR and marketing agency, our bread and butter. Luna Foundation is our charitable foundation which supports women's girls education. Luna Capital, our small VC. Cointelegraph Middle East. And coming soon, Chief Block, a recruitment firm for Web3, and Luna Creative, a branding agency. We have been around since 2017. We are here to stay. And we're extremely excited to travel globally and get our name across. The most important thing to know is the bear market is tough for everybody. But look around you because you may be sitting next to the Web3 equivalent of Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. The point is that you are here today, and that speaks volumes for itself. 
because you are pioneers of the fourth industrial revolution. And so am I. I'm very happy to be here and tell you about my story and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I inspired you guys to keep going. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikita Sachdev of Luna.